Hi and welcome back to part number three. Now we want to scrape data from multiple pages and we need to find the logic how the website's API actually behaves, okay? So now you need to make sure you keep attention because this part is, let's say, a little bit tricky, okay? So at least my way of work looks like this. I use the request for page number one, for page number two and for page number three. And then I take a look inside the parameters. So let me show you again. You see here, when we create our Python request, we have the parameters here, okay? And then I compare the parameters of the first, second, and third request, okay? And out of this, I try to find out or to understand the logic behind the website's API, okay? And then I write another for loop in order to scrape um, the data from multiple pages. That's it. So for now, let's say I want to grab the request for the second page. Okay, again, we have here our website, target.com, and we are inside the first page. Now let's go ahead and try to grab X or so, sorry, to grab the information for the second page. And especially we need to find out how the request for the second page looks like. Okay, so right click inspect, navigate to this network tab, then scroll down all the way. Let's scroll down, scroll down. Okay, now I want to remove all the requests here. Click on clear and then click on the next one. Now let's try and see what is here inside the first request. Go to data, search products. And now, for example, here, the first price is $99.99 and this refers to this one. Okay, this makes sense. What about the next one? The next one is $499, which is the second product here. This makes sense. So this is actually proof enough for us to understand that this request um, is actually containing all the information regarding the results list of page number two. So here again, right click. We want to copy this request as a curl, okay? Then we need to open up again our curl converter, remove all the last um, the last part, then paste in the new command, okay? And this is right now the Python request for page number two. So highlight everything, Control C to copy it, go back to the notebook. And now what I want to do is I want actually to create a few cells and I want to paste the second request here. Okay, this is not right now request number two. This is request number one. And also I want to get access to the request of page number three. Again, I want to understand the logic behind this three different requests, okay? in order to be able to grab actually the information for scraping data from multiple pages, okay? And this is actually a key point, at least this is my way of work. So I scroll down all the way again. Now we are inside the second page, okay? I want to clear up all this information again, then click on next, click on the first re uh, request, take a look inside this data structure and here for example for the first item we have again 99.99 which is this one what about the second one it's 37.99 and this is this one okay again this is proof enough that this request belongs to the result items of page number three right click copy copy as curl then replace all the previous stuff with the new one. And this is right now our new Python request for page number three. Highlight everything, copy that back to the Jupyter Notebook. And now underneath the second request, let's paste in the third one. Okay, that's it. And now we have the request for page number one, page number two, page number three. Now let's compare the logic behind it. So let's take a look at the parameters. Here you see, for example, in the first one, you see that we have the information regarding the offset. Okay, this is actually zero. 
then for the second request we have offset 24 and now page number three is 48 what does this mean or what can this mean is it actually possible that with every new request the number actually starts with zero then for request number two we have 24 then 48 maybe for page number four we have then 72 and for page number five 72 plus 24 is 96 maybe this is the logic behind this request let's try it out and this is why, why i told you it can be very um, useful to compare the logic um, behind this different requests okay what i want to do now is i will just try to copy the first one again okay so the first request copy this and let's scroll all the way down because here we want to start scraping the multiple pages okay and you can see it actually as a separate um yeah as a separate project more or less okay because now we need to change a few things here to be able to grab data not just from one single page doesn't matter of from page number one two or three we need to write a separate for loop to be able to scrape data from multiple pages directly okay and again this is actually the parameter point which is essential for us this offset okay and what we want to do is let's say we want to scrape 10 different pages okay we want to scrape 10 pages that means we need to write the appropriate for loop so we can actually start here okay we can start here and write for i in range we start with zero and our last one is 240 again we start with zero then we have 24 48 72 96 and so on until we have 240 okay and the pages will have an increment of 24 let me just show you what this means okay so this is actually python's range function and i want to show you how this actually looks um, when i print this out in the next cell so copy that for demonstration purposes and here for example let's make it just here i yeah we'll remove it in a few seconds paste it here and let's print out the iteration variable i print it out and now you see that with this range function we can print out 0 24 and so on so all in all we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 results okay again this 240 is actually excluded when we write this range function okay we have again a sequence of numbers but we increment everything with 24 that's it and for example if we wouldn't increment it with um, 24 let me just write another one a sim simpler one for i in range let's say 0 and 5 okay print i let's see what we get we get all the results from 0 until 4 because again 5 is excluded and here we have actually the same logic with the only exception that we increment the numbers by 24 okay and this will be the logic for our pagination part i hope guys this made sense if you have any questions as always please let me know in the comment section for now i will just actually um, cut it off because we don't need it and here again this is what i have actually showed you a few seconds ago and now let me just intent everything okay and then we need to replace this string element offset zero let's replace it with the iteration variable i and we have to cast it inside a string okay because this is right now yeah the crucial point again we have removed the last string element which was a zero and now we need to replace it with another string element which is right now our iteration variable okay this is actually the logic right now next and wait you also need to indent this one okay now this looks good and again don't forget to 
comment this stuff. So it's response. This is the first one. Then we need to go down. And after we have created the response, we want to have the JSON object. Okay. JSON object. And now we just need to make a copy paste from. Doo -doo -doo. Let's scroll down. It's one second here. Here we have stored the JSON object inside this variable. Let's copy this. Go back down. Paste it here. Now we want to have the result items, right? So result items. Let's take a look where we have stored the result items. And actually it was here. Okay. After we have created the JSON object, we have the starting point, which is the result items variable. Okay. Again, we have, we had here in the first page, 27 results. So copy this part, go back down, paste it here. This is fine. And after we have access to the results of a certain page, we can write again our for loop because from each and every page, we want to grab all the data, which is available. Okay. This is right now key. So in the next step, we, what we can do is we can just copy paste this for loop here, because here we have looped through the results of the first page. Okay. And now we want to loop through the results of 10 pages. Okay. That's it. So I mean, the logic will be the same. So copy this whole for loop, go back down and now paste it here. And you also need to take care for the indentation. So here we have our second for loop. That means everything underneath has to be. Um, so I've, I've forgotten uh, intended. Sorry, <laughs> I've almost forgotten the word. So everything underneath this for loop has to be intended. And now before we run this cell, we need to make sure that we also implement or import this empty lists. Okay. This is right now very important because we want to overwrite all the results for the first page and create from scratch the blank lists. Okay. And start appending everything from the beginning. So highlight everything, copy that, go back down because again, we want to separate this first, let's say project where we have scraped the data from one page and we want again to separate it from this pagination part. Okay. Now, before we start our for loop, I will paste this five empty lists here. Okay. And now we should be good to go. And yeah, let's cross our fingers and run this cell. Okay. Now it can take a few seconds. Okay. It was faster than expected. We don't have an error message and I want to output every data here. So that means I go ahead and I want to copy this data frame creation, copy that, go back down. And this is what I again meant when I told you we have actually done the major work. So paste it here, run this. Okay. No error message. This is fine. And now let's output the new created data frame. Okay. And now guys, this looks fine. This is right now our data. You see here we have successfully scraped data from 10 websites. Okay. And we have all in all 243 results. And for example, here we see the first five and the last five and everything between we can't see right now. But if we output everything inside an Excel file, we are able to see all the data points. So let me just do it. So it's target data frame. It's this variable. Then we have to use the to Excel function to Excel. Let's say it's target underscore multiple underscore pages dot XLSX, which is the extension of Excel and the index is false. Okay. Let's run the cell. We don't have an error message and now make sure you open the folder where your notebook is stored. For me, it's this one. And this is the file I've created a few seconds ago. Double click on this. Okay. 
and voila here is the data okay so i would say this looks actually good so let me just one second okay so this is again guys our data okay and if we scroll down we see that now we have access to all the results i don't remember the exact number it's over 200 yep exactly so guys this was actually it okay this was the third part and the last part of this let's say small series how to get access to the api of target.com and how to grab data from multiple pages okay again thank you very much from the bottom of my heart thanks for your time for your patience for your trust and i hope to see you in one of the upcoming tutorials stay safe and see you soon